Hey everyone, this is Sira Sela. Welcome to the Elpa podcast. Elpa is an association of players in your league, which aims to collectively represent players and help their careers. We will be bringing you conversations with current and former EuroLeague players and other personalities from the world of basketball. Our guests will talk about their journeys, on and off the court stories, and look deeper into what it means to be a vital part of the basketball industry. Uh, our main priority is actually, we know that without happy players and uh, and uh, ready players we cannot uh, succeed so yeah. our big focus is on uh, uh, maintaining players uh, uh, happiness life health everything you know that they are 100 ready to, to mm. play in this new episode of elpa podcast i have the pleasure to have european legend nikola vucic as my guest we talked about his journey as a player and how he became sport director of maccabi tel aviv after his career We also discussed the role of a sport director and how it helps him daily in his job to have been a player. And finally, Nikola Vucic shared his thoughts about the players' union and the evolution of EuroLeague. Enjoy! For those who don't know you, can you tell us about your journey as a basketball player? Uh. <laughs> That was a long journey, but uh, in short, I started to play basketball in 92 in Ego Plastica Split. Yeah. I was there for nine years. After that, I signed a contract with Maccabi Tel Aviv. Went one year to France, played in Asphalt, Villarban, and then six years in Maccabi, two years with uh, Olympiakos, one year with F.S. Pilsen, yeah. and then I finished career back to my uh, hometown Split. How did you fall in love with basketball when you were a kid? Uh, I had the luck that uh, in that time uh, it was easy to fall in love with basketball. We had a great uh, national team, first yeah. of Yugoslavia, and then Croatian national team in 92 won uh, uh, second place in Olympic Games. So the hype. And Yugoplastica was three times in a row uh, Europe champion. So it was you know, all about basketball. All about the... basketball. It was really you know big hype about it. So yeah. it was very nice. So you won the EuroLeague in 2004 and 2005. Which one was the hardest to get? The first one is always hardest, you know. Uh, that year was special. We had the Final Four in Tel Aviv. Yeah. And uh, we sh- it was also lots of problems with uh, Iraq. They were threatening to attack us, so they were thinking about canceling Final Four in Tel Aviv. So it was lots of pressure around and lots of things to do to to beat the uh, people did that the final four will be in Tel Aviv so players really felt the big pressure to, to yeah. qualify there and then we had this Zalgiris miracle that we almost lost uh, uh, lost this uh, final four appearance and uh, by miracle we won so it was really special for me you know the most special moment in my life this, yeah. with all this journey that year So you played for some top teams in Europe. How did you see the, the evolution of the games for the years, especially in EuroLeague? Uh, EuroLeague had some uh, you know, ups and downs, but uh, in the quality, because lots of players went to NBA. But lately, we can see that uh, trend uh, turn around. You know, start, NBA players start to come back to Europe, uh, yeah. picking up again the, the quality and picking up the hype around EuroLeague. And uh, you can see also that basketball becoming more equal in all the uh, all the segments with, with NBA and the Europe. Yeah. Uh, now the World Championship, uh, yeah. USA finished seventh and uh, <laughs> the worst ever. But uh, there is lots of good players from Europe and uh, and Euroleague becoming very uh, big, uh, you know, event and big people. For waiting for Thursdays, Wednesdays, Fridays yeah, to watch the games. To watch the games, yeah. So, when you were a player, what does player have today that you didn't have at your time? What <laughs> do you think about that? Uh, a lot of things changed. I, some things, I, the most thing that I feel uh, feel now, the, the changes is that uh, in, in my time, we were dreaming more about trophies, less about money. 
yeah. less about statistics, less about... Uh, we didn't have a social media, all this uh, 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 hype around it also. So we were playing about trophies and the money was following the trophies. Yeah. Uh, now everything is about more, it's a more about money and less talking about uh, trophies. St we still have this in Europe, in Euroleague. Uh, uh, at least clubs explain the things, what is the priorities yeah. to the players. But mm. uh, It's a new uh, generation. It's a new generation. Mm. And today you're the sport director of Maccabi Tel Aviv. How did you end up in this position? So after I finished my career, uh, I was working in uh, Igo Plastica, my hometown. I was a sport director and GM for two years. And uh, people from Maccabi came there. I invited them to, to, to see what I'm doing. And uh, they really like to do what they, what, what they what saw. So they, they, they came back to me to, to... They told me, listen, we want you back to Tel Aviv to do this same in Tel Aviv. So I came. And when you were a player, did you know that at the end of your career you're going to still be in basketball? This is something I, you always I, pictured? I was always pictured it. I was always hope for it. Yeah. But uh, you don't know where the life will take you yeah. until it's happened. So, you know, I, I was always, you know, me and my wife were hoping that we will come back and live in Tel Aviv because this was our city for mm -hmm. six years. We loved it, but we didn't know how. But it looks like yeah. universe find a way. <laughs> And I guess it's an advantage for you to have been a player. How does that help you in your job to have been a player? So you know. So I, I, I pace, uh, pace some things in my career. I can recognize the problems. I can recognize the uh, what what should be done uh, to improve the team. And uh, you know, some things that I pace in experience on this level, yeah. it's hard to hard that people will have it without actually passing through this. So I'm using this experience to help the team, help the coaches. Uh, be better and uh, improve, you know. So I had also, you know, one year luck and win the title with uh, as a sport director with Maccabi. Yeah. So so far, it's so so good. And do you feel do you feel more sensitive to the players? Like, did you already take a decision knowing that it was not good for a player, and so you felt of bad course. about it? Of course, we're thinking about this all the time. Uh, our main priority is actually we know that without happy players and. Uh, and uh, ready players, we cannot uh, succeed. So yeah. our big focus is on uh, uh, maintaining players' uh, uh, happiness, life, health, everything. You know that they are 100% ready to, to mm. play. So as a sport director, you're now working long long hours day after day, a meeting, phone calls. So it's totally different from being a player. How? What would you advise to players who wish to manage a team after their career? <sighs> To have a patient, because uh, as as much as uh, as a player, uh, you pass through some things. This is completely you're on other side. I, I'm saying yeah. it. I'm on other side, and uh, you can use this experience uh, as a player. But uh, you have to be also tough and uh, to manage this situation. It's not easy, you know, especially on the positions. Uh, of sport director or GM and you have to make decisions that you need to cut player, you need to change yeah. player, you know, tough decisions that as a player it's, you always look with, uh, you know, different eyes, but yeah. even now me, you know, I feel really bad when I have to make this kind of decision, but end of the day, this is, this is part of our job, this is, uh, mm. this is the tough part of our job. This is a new job that you yes. have. So the EuroLeague Players Association, this is something you didn't have at your time when you were playing. Did the players try to have something like this back in the time? Oof. I wish I had this in my time. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, this is something also that is uh, a change from... Uh, I think this is a big change for players. NBA has this for many, many years. Uh, we should do this long time ago. It was some attempts, but they were usually cut in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, but uh, without uh, without players, why you know, because of the players or because nobody was uh, able to manage it? Uh, I think it was both sides. It was some uh, some attempts from the some lawyers to establish this okay. uh, union, but then uh, they couldn't uh, unite the players. And uh, you know what? It was also a tougher way of communication than today. Today yeah. you can really communicate with everybody. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, but in my time was uh, quite, you know, still sending faxes and all these things is not working. Uh, but I'm happy for these uh, players today that they have uh, Elpa, 
uh, I believe that uh, together uh, us with uh, Elpa can uh, make this uh, league uh, very serious conditions for players, very serious. And also players, uh, uh, it's helping both sides. Because mm. the rules, when, the, when you have a clear rules, it's much easier to play the game. Yeah. And what would have been different, do you think, if you had it at that time? Uh, clubs will be much more serious. Uh, it will not. Uh, they will not uh, waste money that they know they cannot pay. Yeah. They will know that somebody is there is uh, stopping them. Mm. Uh, it will not happen that players don't get paid. Okay, we had uh, but and all these instances, but it's uh, different instances. It's slower instances and uh, conditions. For sure, we will have a. Uh, you know, we should. Uh, we should have the room. Yeah. A long, long time ago, yeah. you know, 30 years it's old. A single uh, room yes, and I was laughing. I, I slept uh, many nights more with uh, even <laughs> with, <laughs> even with <laughs> your <laughs> president Boki Nachba than with my wife that year. I thought <laughs> I'm sleeping more with you than with my wife. But uh, you know, it's different times, and uh, yeah. there is lots of uh, great ideas uh, from Elpa that should help uh, both sides. So Elpa is giving a voice to the players. What would, uh, which impact does it have on the clubs? Look, clubs for sure. We have uh, now talking from the side of club. Uh, yeah. We know that that going to be some tough decisions to make with Elpa. Mm. Uh, and uh, but there is no other 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 way for all of us to succeed. To all of us to make this uh, uh, step to the great league. We can all see what uh, NBA and. Yeah. Uh, NBA Players Association did together make safer uh, future for players. Uh, it's different, little bit rules in Europe with the taxes, with the uh, yeah. pension. Uh, and it's several countries. It's like several countries. Yes, yeah, several countries with these several rules. But uh, it's important that they started to work that we can uh, establish together a safe future for everybody, for players and for the clubs. Because at the end of the day, there is no clubs without players. Mm. So we have to we have to take care of each other. And how do you see the future of EuroLeague? Bright. I think we are getting better and better every year. Uh, with all these uh, different disputes with the FIBA, with the local championships, uh, I'm sure that soon we're going to find a way how to, how to merge this life together and to make it uh, easier for our players and for the clubs and for the fans, you know, not to confuse the fans. Yeah. At the end of the day, fans are the ones that are uh, bringing us yeah. income, so we have to make it simpler for everybody. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you to Nikola Vucic for this conversation and see you in two weeks for a new episode of Elba Podcast.